Umami is everywhere. Umami is in, is, in, is in your kitchen. Umami is even in the first food, the first drink that you add when you emerge to life. What does it mean, umami? Umami is a Japanese name that is, the, the word is not convoking a, a common reference. And our mission is also today to find a, a way to make people understand that umami is everywhere. Umami is everywhere because uh, this is something that you can find in each time you have a proteins that are matured and transformed during fermentation, maturation, uh, cheese, ham, uh, soy sauce, and not only proteins, you can find umami also in some vegetables. Tomatoes, tomato juice, for example, but also seaweeds, mushrooms, for example. You see, umami in food and wine can be uh, kind of interesting. Just think about umami being a sense to detect the presence of amino acids which are the bricks that compose our proteins. So, so we need to find those bricks in our environment, whether in food, whether in wine. This is where our sense is proactive. They, they help us to find the correct elements in our environment. Umami elements that are two, food and wine that are containing both umami will much pair together as sake wine, as sake wine for example, will pair with a umami rich food in Japan. But some wines are um, better to identify umami than others, especially white wine, wine still wine, because of the absence of tannin, which make the sensation of umami and the reaction to umami much more lisible and visible. What can prevent the detection of umami in red wine, especially in young red wine, is the astringency. The tannins will create a form of roughness in the mouth, which preclude the analysis of your salivation in reaction to umami, which is one of the pillars to identify umami in the wine. So the red wine that offer the best umami are usually old red wines in which the tannins have started to, to melt and disappear. Umami is not just amino acids, it can be also phenolics. And polyphenols may be a source of umami. And where do we find polyphenols in wine? It's in the skin, in the seeds, in the wood, different elements that participate to the production of wine. I think that in, in South Africa, there is at least two added value, as you mentioned, the climate and warm climate. Warm years seems to make the accumulation of some amino acid in the grape a bit higher. But I think the, the major driver is the soil and the large presence of granite soil, poor soil, quartz soils, for example, are soils that are poor because we are sitting here above rocks that are five, seven hundred millions years ago, years, sorry, and these rocks are, are now pretty poor, they've been decomposed for a long time. The soil is made of sand and sandy soils, and these poor soils, which very limited elements can grow, only vine can grow at some point, and finbos, uh, this may ultimately reveal this taste. So, this is a signature, I think, of a lot of places in South Africa, which reveal, in fact, the fact that the, the soil is pretty poor at the origin. It's magic. I think creation has their own level of umami with everything they do. Always fresh innovation. Reaction. That's exactly what you wanted from us. I mean, this is just mind-blowing. I think it's the culmination really of all the influences that I find creation drawing from the earth, drawing from local resources, whether it's their team, whether it's inspiration from the flavors all around and then international uh, expertise like we've seen tonight and wrapping it all up in such a tasty, sensual experience. And the whole umami thing is that, you, you know, it's, um, you salivate and it encourages you to want more. And we do have our umami, but we don't know it. And ours is not a natural one. And we, have, we don't have the tradition around it. Well, I don't think I'll be sleeping for the next week. Uh, my mind is buzzing because tonight was a gastronomic explosion. And I think we need more of these um, opportunities to actually discover what amazing wine and food and what amazing offerings we have in South Africa. What he explained was so much for me about a confirmation. 
So it's, oh wow, you know, that, that really that umami taste is that sweet and a little bit of salty, that coating, that beautiful taste. And then it made so much more sense when you're drinking a wine or eating a food, um, what it's all about. So looking at how we've always perceived how the tongue functions in terms of the sensorial mechanisms of the tongue uh, has now changed to accumulate other senses. It, it, it was quite you know, interesting. I think that uh, umami is a bit of a surprise for people to describe wine. Uh, we've never really thought in that way. You know, we only thought of, as you said, sweet as acidity and bitterness and so forth. And umami is new for us in wine. So it's very interesting to listen to him and to his research on where this umami comes from and what it tastes like. So the exercises were interesting and stimulating.